Our last section in this FinTech 101 webinar series, uh, now that we've covered the Fin and the tech, we're gonna talk opportunity. And we're gonna take a look at what's going on in FinTech across the African continent and Asia Pacific, and what kind of opportunities are specifically available in Rwanda, Liberia, and Cambodia. Um, I've never worked in either of these markets, but I've used American, African, and Asian sources to do some homework on very broadly what's going on in these regions and where the opportunity is, and we're gonna start with Africa. FinTech is really having a moment in Africa, and startups in this sector are receiving the most investment year over year. 80% of the continent's 400 plus FinTechs across 20 markets are homegrown, with Cape Town, Johannesburg, Lagos, and Nairobi emerging as the four FinTech hotspots, with Accra and Kigali keeping up the rear. While fintech is most famous in the States for disrupting traditional financial services, in Africa, it's really filling the gaps and building up what's historically been an underdeveloped industry in a region of the world where millions of adults remain unbanked. So it's no wonder that the payments tech industry dominates African fintech, targeting payments, lending, insurance, and investments. Mobile money services as first brought to Kenya by M-Pesa back in 2007 were groundbreaking. And today in Sub-Saharan Africa, 43% of adults have an account at a bank or at least with a mobile money service provider. And this is up from 34% in 2014. And we've seen significant growth across West African countries. Ghanaian FinTech, MTN, even took their company through a successful initial public offering or IPO done mainly through mobile money. And in Nigeria, payments API company Flutterwave struck a deal with Chinese e-commerce behemoth Alibaba, which now allows African merchants to receive payments from Alipay, Alibaba's e-wallet product with 1 billion users. And of this recording in March, 2021, Flutterwave also just reached unicorn status after securing a $170 million Series C. So congrats to Flutterwave. If you are looking to get into the fintech scene in Rwanda, fintech startups have tripled in the last five years and there's a lot taking off in Kigali. Save, for example, is a digital platform that financially empowers savings groups or local collectives through an open and user-friendly savings group ledger handling. Benefactors is a Kigali-based startup who help Rwandan small and medium-sized enterprises do more business through factoring, a financial service where future payments like uh, unpaid invoices from buyers are sold to a third party. By offering working capital to Rwandan small and medium enterprises, they don't need to wait as long to get paid and invest that money in their business. It was more difficult to find fintech companies founded in Liberia, but knowing how many African fintechs base their products and services on mobile money applications, uh, mobile network operators might be a good place to start if you're looking to break in. For example, in 2017, UN Women and Orange Liberia launched a partnership to provide mobile banking services to women and girls, helping them become mobile money agents in their communities and marketplaces. Liberian networks with established mobile money services include Lone Star Cell and LibTelco has just gotten the green light from the government to enter the market. Fintech in Southeast Asia. So similar to Africa, Fintech is Southeast Asia's largest venture capital investment category by number of backed startups. Tech ecosystems in Indonesia and Singapore are each home to six unicorns. Again, companies valued at over $1 billion. Fintech in Southeast Asia is also fueled by a historically underserved and underbanked population. Uh, the region is seeing an ever rising smartphone penetration and relentless e-commerce growth that require the use of financial services. Interestingly, successful ride hailing platforms like the Singaporean Grab and Indonesian Gojek are expanding beyond ride sharing to offer financial services through, and you guessed it, platform banking. They're acquiring existing fintechs and partnering with others to expand their financial product offerings. Cambodia specifically has some very exciting fintech companies and uh, government initiatives going on right now. In 2020, the National Bank of Cambodia launched the state-backed Bakong, a blockchain-based payment platform for conducting instant mobile payments with QR codes and phone numbers connecting digital wallets over a blockchain. Bakong does not involve Bitcoin or crypto. It's similar to Facebook's DM in that it's backed by the bank's dollar or real reserves. 
And similar to many countries across Africa, Cambodia also has a very young population, the youngest in Southeast Asia with a third of all citizens under the age of 30. This explains the equal presence of Cambodian fintechs, focus on mobile payments and e-wallets with every year more and more young people coming of age, getting jobs and needing a more formal banking relationship. So Wing uh, launched in 2009 and it's a payments tech company committed to providing financial inclusion to the unbanked and underbanked in Cambodia. Wing's CEO talks to the intersection of the agricultural sector and fintech as he notes, the opportunity to work hand in hand with first time users who may not rely on technology for their financial needs is going to be crucial in deciding the social impact of agricultural commerce and mobile commerce initiatives in Cambodia and countries who are also considered to be underbanked. Africa and Southeast Asia are not homogenous markets, we know that. And startups and specifically fintechs looking to break into new markets across these regions or start new businesses need to be tapped into the local culture to understand the cultural nuances that will be key to the success of the business and their consumers. So whether you are looking to work for a large global fintech company with a local presence or you want to get into fintech startup scenes across Africa, Asia, Europe, the US, or Latin America, the choice is yours. No matter what your scholastic interests, college majors, or past college majors may be, there are tons of jobs in fintech that align with those passions. Love coding? Become a blockchain developer and help drive the growth of crypto and secure payments. Into the arts? As a UX designer, you could design the interface or user experience for an app <clears throat> into arts as a ux designer you could design the interface or user experience for an app looking at how to make it more intuitive or appeal to say a rural cambodian farmer as the company looks to truly include more users love a little competition these fintech products don't sell themselves start off as a business development representative and fast track your growth to a sales account executive Want to steer change? Become a venture capitalist and have your say in which companies and which solutions get funded or work for a local accelerator and help startups get off the ground. And that brings us to the end of the FinTech 101 webinar series. We've learned a ton, history, sectors, companies, tech, FinTech models. Uh, and we've learned a little bit about what uh, the fintech industry looks like across the world, specifically in Africa and Southeast Asia. So thank you so much for watching my webinar series. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. Uh, we'll do follow-up webinars and uh, SaaS Savvy is really going to be home to a lot of different kinds of videos and informations on you on the tech and the tech industry. So like, follow, subscribe, all that stuff. Thank you so much. And we'll be back.